Well, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for another exciting edition of The Invisible Man. Today, we have filmmaker Ken Loxton with us, and I'll introduce him in just a moment. So I just wanted to let everybody know, um, big nasty storm here in Winnipeg. My internet has, uh, cable's been ripped from the house, and it's hanging literally by a thread. Um, <laughs> so if we go down, oh, actually, I've also got a power, a big uh, branch um, on my power. It's like a big guitar string, really taut, and that could go at any moment too so we could doubly go down twice i just want to <laughs> let you know um if we go if we go suddenly you'll know why um so uh, introductions ryan Alrighty. well live here it's the invisible man show uh from studio live from studio 700 <laughs> <laughs> and, and sitting true. over to my left here this wonderful guy is mark david stollard he uses his middle name even though he doesn't have to and this is Ryan Jan's bass man. <laughs> His middle name is also David B. He doesn't use it even though he should. And we are It's, it's All in the mind. mind. Hey, that's like the best we've ever done it. Uh, ever. <laughs> ever. Even in practice. <laughs> that's great. Just stop saying that because we're gonna look incompetent. Yeah, uh, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I don't think enough. people are I don't think people are tuning in for our choreograph. Uh, so intros, we're going yeah. out live. Um, this is gonna be a podcast as well once I've figured out how to get that all working. So if you're uh, you, you can't see some of the visuals uh, if you're watching this later in the podcast form. But you can catch us all on YouTube and you get all our links to everything on the invisible man.ca links to everything, including past shows as well. Um, so without further ado, uh, Ken Loxton is our guest today. He's a Winnipeg um, photographer and media producer. He is the owner of Ken Loxton Productions and Ken Loxton Media Group. And the reason he's with us today is um, that he is the producer and director of the documentary Canadian Homegrown Musicians Showcase, featuring Winnipeg Musicians at episode one. Um, we've talked about this on the show a few times. I think we did a, um, just a, a spoiler free talk uh, when, about, uh, being part of the, um, the pri private screening. Mm -hmm. Um, so as regular audiences, you will be familiar with us at least talking about that anyway. So here we go. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's bring on Ken Loxton. Hey Ken, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. So, uh, <laughs> you're surviving the winter. Well, it's just started. Yeah, for those of you who don't know me, I hate winter with a passion. So yesterday just uh, almost killed me. <laughs> well, almost killed a lot of people, actually. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's yeah, it's the start of uh, nine long months. Yep. Yeah, and then we get to enjoy mm -hmm. construction again. Yay. So my, my theory that I posited, I put this on a, on, on my Facebook at about, uh, I don't know, it was probably around seven or eight yesterday morning. Uh, of course that was late for me because I was up at, up at like two to get to work for three. Uh, I, I was wondering if it's all the people who ordered pumpkin spice lattes in the, at, at the end of August, there seemed to be a push f to get pumpkin season started. And then all of a sudden the snow came. So I, if if you were one of those people, anyone who's watching, Jacques, Jacques, say. <laughs> oh, Tim Hortons is is a is a dirty word in this house. You, you don't <laughs> well, that's okay. Oh, I, no. Your sponsors. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's I, and it's not Canadian coffee anymore. Right? It's owned by a Brazilian company, so it's a Brazilian coffee. Yeah, hey, it's I, I I'm only going to be a coffee snob when I can <laughs> afford to be, and well, nah. Okay, we'll, we'll get into it later. <laughs> Let's do a quick shout out to uh, some of the people online. So, hi, Chris, Chris Lady, um, good friend of the show and a good personal friend. Yep. Uh, Catherine McGoy from Fleetwood, England. Um, we've got, let's go down the list here, uh, Teresa Holmes. So, I, yes, I absolutely remember who you are, Teresa. Um, so, Teresa is actually the uh, um, older sister of my musical partner in England for we were about 10 years writing lots and lots of songs <laughs> and a couple of his songs actually ended up on our last CD so it's Gavin yeah. Gavin George so Teresa George as I knew her um, although uh, I think we used to call you Cindy all the time I think didn't we uh, Teresa <laughs> that was because we couldn't use your I'm sure there's a story that that would make it for a good musical mire, I think. Okay, yep. And uh, how come <laughs> Gavin Teresa poke Gavin I want Gavin on the show yeah. sometime <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know if he actually is on Facebook, is he? <laughs> Anyhow, let's uh, 
we'll uh, continue with the show. So, uh, Ken, uh, we, I gave you a quick introduction. Um, go and maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself there, a little bit of idea, stuff, stuff I didn't touch on, and uh, you know, a bit of your background, that kind of thing. Uh, background, well, I've been in the uh, the video production industry uh, since, uh, you're going to make me date myself? Jeez, guys, thanks. I graduated <laughs> in, in uh, broadcasting in 1984, so oh. yeah, do the math. I'm, I'm an old dude. Um, <laughs> and, so uh, you, you were still using reel-to-reel tape at that point? You betcha. Right on. Right? <laughs> Digital is is uh, is so much easier, but uh, yeah, we uh, we went to school and we're taught to uh, you know splicing real tape, right? So it was uh, it was cut it was diagonally tape. with the tape, right, and get the masking yep. right over top. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, right. That's the only way. If if you can learn that, you can do anything. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So it's actually why, as a as a sort of an amateur photographer myself, I actually forced myself to shoot thirty five millimeter before I bought a DSLR. Like I just so you can learn composition, learn how to take a shot, and try and make your stuff look as good as possible. Now, you I won't still screw up because it costs you money if you screw up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a couple of reels that didn't quite make it, and I'm sure I'm sure all of us who was, who shot thirty five millimeter at some point. I've done that, right? So yeah, this is gonna be a great role. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> and nowadays, finding people that will develop it is harder and harder, unless you do it yourself. It's it's yeah, old school. Yeah, gone to the days of putting in an envelope and sending it off for a couple of weeks. Yep. Well, actually, uh, or or like here, I'll I'll pick it up this afternoon. It's more like here, I'll drop it off at at Dawn's, or even uh, there used to be shoppers on Portage right down by uh, Arlington. They used to develop all the film, and everything would get shipped to them. And now they sh they ship it out to some lab somewhere. So gone are the days of even picking it up like next day. It's more like here, six weeks. What? Yeah, back in the seventies, I remember. No, I it's don't remember very, the 70s. So, you know. Um, <laughs> they're there. They're there. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, yeah so I, I graduated uh, back a long time ago, and uh, let's let's see if I can give you the PBS special. Um, I had an opportunity uh, to to purchase a company from my cousin who was in, in the uh, in the industry. And after after discussing it with with my wife, we decided that we would we'd, we'd jump on and we'd uh, you know we'd buy the company, um, change the name, and the paychecks went down the drain because uh, nobody knew us and we had to start from scratch. So uh, for 25 years, I was in the audio industry uh, doing uh, live sound uh, for uh, you know events and and stuff like that. And then I got into the video aspect because I was really bored. Um, because it was the same old, same old all the time. Uh, got into the video aspect of it and found out, holy crap, this is so much harder, right? <laughs> um, so much harder. But the paychecks were much larger. So it was like, hey, maybe I'm on the right track here. And, uh, and we started uh, doing uh, productions for commercials, uh, mini docs, uh, promo videos, web videos, stuff like that. And I thought, hey, this is kind of cool. Then we, we we got into doing, you know, the like everybody does, the wedding videography and, and, uh, and uh, did that. Then I uh, learned photography and, um, yeah, and it just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and here we are today, 30 years later. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that's uh, that's that's much more involved than my semester at high school learning how to do digital <laughs> editing on a Power Mac. <laughs> that was that was my exposure to it. And unfortunately, when I graduated, I had the short sightedness not to to get into it. I I sort of had had sort of illusions that I'm going to go into the IT and hardware side of things, and I'm just going to fix computers, and I'm that's going to be my life. And then we had the big market crash in 2000, where everybody and their dog was an MCSE, and and the market was flooded, and nobody could work for more than like thirty thousand dollars a year. So that that yeah. spiraled down the down the drain, and and thus began a long career of trying to figure out what I want to do for a living and how I'm going to support myself. And small business, big business, I've worked for them all. Which I'm probably still trying to figure out what I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Um. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm still not quite there. I have a solid career and a good job, but I, I just, 
yeah, it's uh, yeah. Fire alarm work is is challenging, but it's not exactly the most creatively fulfilling. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I also, uh, as of, of recently, um, I was teaching broadcasting at a local college part time. So uh, you know, try and give back to the community and try and uh, you know um, do what you can. So. Yeah. So back to the documentary. So where, where did the idea for that come from originally? You know, we've been toying with this idea for, I'm going to say almost two years. Okay. We've been toying with the idea, if we could do this, this is what we would do. And it was two years of growth in, in okay, let's do this concept. And then the more we thought about it, and as more time went by, we, no, 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 let's rip it up and throw it away and start from scratch. Um, as, as Howard Manshine said uh, so gracefully, um, we have the best musicians in the world. And I honestly believe that, right? I've seen a lot of the talent that we have. And it was, it kind of became an obsession with, with us in, in regards to, okay, we know musicians are starving. We know that. Um, how can we promote them? How can we showcase them uh, in such a way that nobody's tried before? Uh, so we we you know came up with this. Okay, it's it's all about the it's all about them. Let's do some in depth interviews with them. Let's let's let people really learn who they are as musicians because mm -hmm. that's kind of cool. You 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 know you may watch like you know as we're interviewing uh, Luce. Uh, you know, she likes strawberry ice cream. Maybe that's one of the, her, her things. And, uh, you know, you, you learn something new, you know, from a, uh, a typical musician that you that you follow instead of just them on stage. Uh, then we decided to do uh, a step further. We, we started doing uh, live shows with them. So we, we filmed uh, a live show, uh, which was very interesting because the hall was empty. Uh, and they had to make it look like there was 3,000 people there. So it was, uh, they all did really well, right, in, in, in showcasing themselves. But the whole idea was let, somebody's got to do it. And the longer we sat, nobody was stepping up. Nobody was stepping up. And I know it's funding, right? There's no funding there. So, so we decided you know we, we 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 got a sponsor and we'll talk about uh the sponsor in in a little bit but we decided we were going to go and do this uh, production even if we had to pay for it ourselves which okay. most of it we did okay uh now tickets uh, uh tickets ticket company was involved how did that relationship come about um ticket.ca um Peter Valdi um, was a childhood friend of mine. Oh, we okay. grew up. We grew up together. We went to school together. Um, we went to concerts together. We we you know we hung out, um, and I've been very close with Peter. Um, so when I pitched the idea to Peter of hey, you know, not only do we want you involved, we want your money. Um, we can talk like that because you know we're friends. Um, but it was a good fit for for them they started uh, their company uh just recently um we felt that they needed the exposure okay. and and we just uh we just grew but uh, no we're very close um now had you uh, approached any other companies before that or was that like a... oh shit! where do we start <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> You start at um, the first one that said no, and then we work our way up until all the ones that said yes, right? And that's how it, that's how it works, right? Awesome. Uh, we, the funny thing is, is we reached out to over 200 companies for sponsorship. We went to, we went to Long McQuaid, and we talked to uh, the marketing people at Long McQuaid. I even emailed Jeff at Long McQuaid, which is one of the owners. Didn't get a reply. Didn't get a reply. And it was like, what's going on here? You want people to buy your, your instruments, but you're not willing to support the industry. So I found that very annoying. Um, to this day, I'm, I'm still, you know, discussing with them. Um, but they're not, they're not interested in, in sponsoring. Um, so it makes it 
difficult. So yeah. we reached out to, yeah, we reached out to a lot of people and right across Canada because we figured, well, why put a border on it? Um, and none of them came came into play. Now, if if Peter and Tixit.ca never uh, came to reality, we would have paid for this whole thing ourselves. Right. We, mm-hmm. we really would have because it was just, it was something that we, we feel strongly about. Um, and, and you, you know what? We had a blast. These guys, you know, they don't have a care in the world. And, and, and we just had a lot of fun filming. Right. So it was, it was I, the only thing I wish we would have did, uh, was did a behind the scenes, uh, little, little film on, you know, all the shit that was, I did it again. I swore, uh, all the stuff <laughs> that went, on, uh, behind the scenes because we had a blast. Right. Yeah. We really did. So that's that's where that uh, that came from. All right. So I think Luce might actually. I don't. I haven't seen her join the stream yet. But in case she doesn't come in, obviously Load was the best one, right? But who who is your favorite? To interview? <laughs> <laughs> Luce is a, is a, has been on the show a couple of times and just a blast. Always is a great fun. But Ken, who is your favorite to uh, to well, interview? I, you know what? I'm a classic rock guy. I am a classic rock guy, and and I, I have to say that Barry uh, Barry G Player was my favorite because I follow Barry, uh, and and I really like his music, right? Uh, not to say that I didn't fall in love with a lot of the other acts afterwards, because um, when we when we listen to and if you listen to to Load's music, okay, so I'll put the, a little plug in for them as well. <laughs> it. it very ambient, very spacey, and I know I'm not giving the right terminology for this. No, it's okay. I had a hard time putting my finger on the genre when we did our initial inter- interview with with uh, with Loose. I saw a couple of of like promo photos. I'm thinking, okay, we got a little bit of Blondie and Pat Benatar. I'm thinking we're gonna have a punk rock sh- uh, show, and it's gonna be right on, right? You know, my punk metal roots were just going crazy, and then I listened to their their album that they're promoting. I was like. This sounds like Dusty Springfield meets Gwen Stefani with a little bit of like um, uh, who is it? Janice Ian storytelling in it, right? And and like that's all great. I just I was expecting A and I got B, right? And I was like, and it was a pleasant surprise. So I I totally understand when you can't really <laughs> can't really put that your thumb on what exactly load is. Um, you know, and and yeah, so we we started listening to uh, Loose would send us some tracks. What we did with the artists was we said. Send us your best track. This is how you're going to audition. Send us one track. You're either going to make it or you're not with this one track. So pick your best. Um, and uh, it was funny because Lou sent us the song just like Bruce Lee. And, and I'm sure you guys know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love that song. Right? It, it, the, it took me about 10 times to listen to it to really fall in love with it. Because it starts off a little weird. And usually I'm the type of guy that'll uh, no, it's not for me, and I'll shut it off, right? But I was I was listening more and more, and I, and I you know, it's like this is kind of cool. I like this song. So a lot of the artists that we that we chose, it took us what we were looking for uh, for um, was can they hold a tune? Um, are they tight? Is, <laughs> is it the, the genre that we're looking for? Uh, so all good qualifications like- so far for uh, for musical acts. Can you hold a tune? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's good. <laughs> uh, so it, it was, you know, we said send us what you want because I'm not going to say that your music is is good or is is not based on your style. We may not like it, but you know, it's it's you have a following. And uh, and we went from there. So all of the acts that we chose, and there was a lot of a lot of acts, but we had to stop somewhere. We we had a set budget that we had to follow, right? Read, and, read Phil's call. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, yeah. Phil. I, I got to or, uh, Ken. I got distracted by one of one of Phil's comments. Phil Dupuy, our co-host, uh, whose parents are currently trapped in Southern Manitoba, like m- most many people are. And Phil can't join us because he's desperately trying. I hope things are all working out for you, Phil, and you've you've heard from them. But uh, he's he's saying, "Don't worry, Ken. Uh, he's way more obscene." When than you are so letting a couple slide by, we're not going to be too worried about it. You're still welcome to come back and <laughs> so 
Sorry, I, I just totally broke the flow there. Good job, Brian. Well done. You know, I've seen your show, and if you want, I can step it up. And, and <laughs> where you really need me to be. Oh, wait, wait till my wife texts me when she's put my daughter down to to sleep. Then you can you can start dropping the dropping some <laughs> some obscenities. Uh, we're not worried about uh, losing monetization on this one because we're not monetizing it. So. Oh, cool. Awesome. Um, but we, here's, here's what had happened when we first started the, uh, this, the, the screening for the bands. We didn't have a sponsor at the time. So there was a small administration fee that we, that we suggested that the artists pay. This way it, it paid for stuff that, you know, we needed to uh, doing. Um, a lot of people weren't interested in that. And I understand that. Um, but then once we got the sponsor, we 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 uh, waived the fee and we were able to just showcase them as as they were. Um, but back to the music, um, all of them. If you notice, if you watch the uh, the film, it's all different genres. Mm -hmm. The only one we could not get was country, mm -hmm. right? We could not get a country artist on board if our life depended on it, oh. and and that was too really? bad because that was the one genre that we were mm -hmm. missing, right? Wow, that's, that's quite that's interesting. That's got a major one as well. Because there's yeah. there's actually quite a a big presence, like country yeah. presence, Massive, yeah. particularly outside the perimeter, right? Like there, there's a lot yeah. of country fans inside the perimeter, but I mean, country music's a big thing in southern Manitoba. Dauphin has uh, up in the north there has country fest every year. It's a and it's a show, man. Like yeah. it's you know worldwide acts are going to that so yep. uh, i'm surprised that you couldn't find a, at least an independent country artist that wouldn't yep. want to do that that's that's a big surprise was they had to be an unknown they couldn't be a signed label ah. right yep. signed to a label they had to be uh you know a indie country band and this way legally they were okay to promote it um so yeah and that was and that was kind of sad that we uh that we didn't uh that we couldn't find anybody but I guess country is sort of a different animal that way. Um, we've had a we had a country artist on oh, a number of months back, and she seemed to be relatively successful. Uh, and uh, Dolly, yeah, yeah Dolly, Dolly uh, great talent. I'm not a particularly big country music fan myself, but uh, you know you can recognize talent, and when somebody's good at doing something, then hey, more power to you. I mean, not that I'm going to complain about things being complex. Uh, you know, I I love punk and that's four chords just played at you know 200 beats a minute as opposed to 120 right so yeah, exactly. six and one half See, a dozen another right we even went on to uh manitoba music's website and went into the directory and emailed everybody direct um and it was you know what for our first show uh, i think we we found four five five really good musicians uh, from from different genres and it worked out perfectly um so uh, if we look at uh, bush uh, bush stones and the lucky uh, those kids uh, if if we did a poll and people were to pick their favorite i think they would be it i really do because through the whole uh filming process through all of the screening uh, that was the the go-to those kids were the go-to uh, band for yeah they're gonna they're gonna go somewhere right they're definitely gonna go somewhere mm -hmm. uh, i really enjoyed um uh doing the uh the the uh the, the jazz uh lady lee uh when we filmed her at the uh Assiniboine park um i really enjoy you know some blues and jazz and, and real real there was a lot of fun but uh, at the end of the day, they all stepped up and, 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 and did what they wanted to do. And we hope that the documentary will give them exposure. That's all we're hoping for, is if we can give them exposure and they can get more people that like them on Facebook or go out and buy their, their music, then our job is done. Then our job is done. Right. Um, so was there any... And we talked. We talked about uh, you couldn't get the genre of country. Was there any particular uh, bands that uh, outright said no? Other than them, no, no, they, they just never replied. 
Okay. We had we had one uh, one artist who was interested. Uh, Dolphin Country Fest was a an issue because he was playing there, and it was the same time that we were filming, yeah. so it didn't work. Yeah. Um, but no, a lot of people didn't reply, uh, and which was sad because this was a casting call. Right? Yeah. Here's an opportunity for yeah. you to uh, promote your music. Yeah, so. yeah, it's odd. Mm. Yeah. It is kind of odd. I don't remember getting approached. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. I, I don't know. Uh, you, you know what? Approach us. Hey. I, I, <laughs> I guess nobody's really privy to what we were discussing off screen, but I mean, our my experience with Manitoba music. I'm, and there's people who have had great experiences with them, but my experience with Manitoba music has been kind of less than than stellar. Um, I, I won't get into it. I've trashed them enough on <laughs> on there. Uh, if if you if you're able to make a go of it with Manitoba music, that's great. I just know I I didn't have much luck with them. I had, yeah. Yeah, and especially when um, at one point I wasn't working and music was my only income. And man, we were I was every penny stretched thin. And it's like, well, I'm gonna pay you fifty bucks and then pay another twenty to go to a seminar about how to you know oh. All you have to do to get your music on college radio is drop off a CD to the the place and make nice with the with the guy. I paid you twenty bucks for that. Like seriously, you couldn't <laughs> just put that in an email. Like, come on, man. Like, I I had to find change in the couch to get in the bus. Like, come on, man. That's <laughs> this is not fair. <laughs> it's, it's sad, but here's what we heard from the people at the screening: was where is Manitoba music? Why aren't they here? Yeah. Right for reading, um, and we were approached by them, and they said that uh, they were too busy, uh, which is which yeah. is sad because you're taking money from artists, and yeah. you're uh, yeah. I'm 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 kind of getting to the same place that you are. Um, you pay you know for all this stuff, but you're not getting anything in return. I really truly believe that the artists are on their own. Right. And this yeah. is just just me working through through this doc, trying to network with all of these individuals. Um, you guys are truly on your own. Right. So yeah. so what, what do you do to get to that next, you know, next thing? Um, I'll give, give you an, uh, an example. Uh, you asked me earlier who my favorite uh, musician in the, in the doc was. Um, Barry G. Player back in the 80s was opening for bands like Molly Hatchet and, and doing big, big shows. Mm. He's now back to doing local gigs, right? Uh, what's wrong with this picture, right? Mm. Shouldn't you be, you know, reaping the reward and, and, and uh, you know, having bigger shows? Um, I, you know what? I and I don't want to say that that I have all the answers because I really don't. But as an outsider uh, that has stuck his nose into the industry um, for the last year uh, doing this, um, it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. So I can just imagine how discouraged the the artists are trying to you know get that next gig or get that next deal. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of one of the things we were uh, trying to fill that gap here with the with this show when we were, uh, mm -hmm. we were very um, very passionate about um, obviously we're very passionate about independent music we are musicians and we want to yep. and I, I felt for a very long time that we should be as just as musicians we should be working yeah. together to promote each other rather than because there are a lot of uh, we've had I don't know how many acts we've invited on stage with us we've um, reached out to them to join us and then you know some some of those gigs are paid someone weren't and yep. I don't think we ever got invited back yeah, not, not once. Yeah. Um, so, so, which is so let me ask you. Let me ask you this question: As a musician, why would you play a gig for free? Yeah. I'm the, the, oh. the, 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 is coming out saying, "I'm not doing anything. I'm not getting out of bed unless I'm getting paid." Yeah. Right. Yeah. But there's a lot of musicians that'll go out and do. They'll do a gig for free. Right. Well, there's there's a couple. We actually have a whole. We actually did like. Separate from the Invisible Man show, we do a, a show called Musical Meyer, and it's just some of our our own experiences. And we actually did go over a couple of times where what is when is it appropriate to play for free, and when is it not appropriate to play for free, and just like anything, like you're you're a video production guy, right? And you 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 do creative stuff. You 
it's hard to to say, okay, well, this is going to cost me. It's not like a, a normal trade job where it's going to be like, hey, this is going to be like an hour and a half of work, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put in thirty minutes for for video editing and twenty minutes to shoot it, and this for inter- into incidentals. It's like this is a five thousand dollar project. It's a five thousand dollar project because I got to buy two new mics that are three hundred dollars each, right? It's hard to actually put that into into there. So now you have to spread that cost over several jobs, right? So yeah. It when you play for free, it, like if you just ap- approach G- any any bar, random bar owner or club owner on off the street, say, "Hey, my band wants to wants to play a gig. You should be getting paid for that gig, right? Regardless." I yeah. there's a big story that's on on that musical Meyer about how I went and I signed not only us to play there, another one of the ba- other bands that I was playing in, and another sort of fellow musician who was like a house DJ, and the Bar or owner screwed him over. He screwed us over. We were able to get out of there. He was holding like the guy's equipment for free, like it or for a hostage, so that he would have to come back and get it to to play for free for the next day. And it was it was a it was a thing. Like it was it was awful, right? And then it's like, I, you want me to play for free? You want me to bring people into your crappy bar that's not getting anybody in there, dude? I can bring in like twenty people, maybe, maybe. <laughs> See, we should have did a documentary on on that because <laughs> yeah. there's more stories like that uh, in the whole city of you know give us your 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 worst gig experience uh, <laughs> something like that. that would be really entertaining yes, right it, it would. would yeah but yeah. can you imagine the stories that would come out of that yeah. that would oh, be yeah. horrendous. <laughs> right. well it, it's it's and it's hard too because you know uh, in one on one hand it'd be like you know, we're all musicians. We all talk, right? Hey, this guy pays well. This guy pays crap. So guess who, where all the musicians go? They go to where they're going to get paid, right? So yeah. there's like a normal formal thing, but, uh, you know, it just seems like the the watching a band live and and stuff, it, it isn't really the musical, that isn't really what people want to see musically. It just yeah. seems like, and so... On one hand, yes, there's the the angry protest punk. Let's write an angry ode, you know, kind of <laughs> get mad. This is this should be better. But at the same time, if nobody wants to see what I'm playing, maybe I should modify what I'm doing. And that's not necessarily being untrue to my roots, right? You're altering your music, and and you're going against everything that you truly believe in. Right. Well, I wouldn't go so far to say that, right? It's more like if if people aren't into into like, um, uh, it's easy to use the metal 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 band for this because it's all in the minds of big fusion band. So we we usually end up having lots of places to play. But if nobody's into thrash metal anymore, like Metallica or Megadeth or something like that, that's just not the 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 metal scene anymore. They're more into yeah. screamo, you know. Maybe I should take it as a as a hint. I should probably change not the attitude and the focus of the band, be real to the band, but maybe we should modify it so that people like it, right? There's no shame. Like even Nirvana yeah. wrote songs and that are basically was ba- were basically pop songs, but put a lot of yeah. heavy distortion on it because they're going to reach the most most people, right? And that's the then idea: is we want to reach the most people. That, yeah. Then you get the bands that come out and go, okay, you know what? This is a business. Forget the uh, forget you know my beliefs. Uh, what do people want to hear that is going to get me on the charts? And I will I will follow you know the Madonna you know scene, or I will follow the uh, you know the Metallica scene. If it's working for them, let's try it ourselves, right? Um, right. Yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, side note here: Manitoba Music told us that there was forty four hundred musicians in Manitoba. 4400 yeah 4400 <laughs> think of all the 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 venues that are, that there are to play think of the 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 struggles that you have to get into these places because there's so many musicians mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. um yeah it's a side note that i thought you know i'd let phil know and, and shit <laughs> yeah actually um chris Halidi had uh, made a comment about uh, volunteering um and like, well, yeah, this is fine. We we've done some charity shows. I think the first show we played at was a yep. um, charity shop called Scope, and at the time they were they would do um, I think it was weekly musical musical shows, um, and it was a um, they were raising money for um, people with going through mental issues and yeah, helping to integrate them in, back into society. Um, 
and it was a great cause. I a cause I still strongly believe in. Mm -hmm. Volunteering is absolutely perfectly fine and and as and as good, and we felt good about it, and we did we played that more than once, I think. Twice. twice we did twice okay. um, we did the big show first that our first show the Beatles show yeah uh in fact we weren't even it's all in mind it was mark david stollard featuring ryan jance on bass yeah. i still have the poster <laughs> hanging up in my basement <laughs> but uh but yeah we we went in there it was fine they we knew that they couldn't pay us or whatever yeah. they could pay us was was uh, well, I think it was. We knew it was. Uh, it was a charity. We yeah. were doing it to support the charity, and I even gave them a yeah. few CDs to sell. Yeah, right. exactly. And and they op operated a thrift shop, and they gave us vouchers for the fr yeah. thrift shop. It's not like they didn't. They were like, "Aha, we'll just give you a volunteer." Blah blah blah. Hey, this is yeah. what we can do for you. Which yeah. we recognized. Hey, you know what? I appreciate the, I appreciate the the you know the reciprocal side of this. I've done a yeah. service for you. I know you can't really pay what we should be. But because you're a charity and because you're actually helping people, I'll I'll take the lower hit. That's no problem. And you're getting the exposure, which is which is good. And you're and you're doing something you know that you know is is right, uh, and and it makes you warm and fuzzy inside. And yeah. and absolutely, but there's a big difference uh, you know, between doing a working for free to help a charity than it is yep. to um, to promote to, a bar. To, to promote a bar <laughs> who they're doing it to make preferably. You know they're hoping that they're going to make a profit, and they're not sharing that yeah. with us. But we're working for them, yeah. And yeah, yeah. There's, there's a big difference. Yeah, no two. kidding. So exactly, we um, no, and and us over here, we we truly believe that you know we do. We have people that come to us and say, hey, listen, can you do it for this price? Or you know, we're we're non for profit, and if I have nothing on the books, sure, I'll do it. Right. But if it if it conflicts with something else that we're doing, then, you know, you have to stand firm. But at the end of the day, you're doing something good for the community and you are getting exposure because they're going to tell somebody and they're going to tell somebody and they're going to tell somebody. So. So, yeah, it's 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 we have to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there's yeah, and uh, Chris here has also put on a uh, has put on a uh, a comment, yeah, and he's absolutely right. There's a fine line between exposure and exploitation. Yeah, absolutely, and I think I think you nailed it. Uh, if uh, if you're doing it and you know you can do it, sort of sort of a little bit lower, and you got nothing else that's going to interfere right, with actually that's going to make you money, then go right ahead. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, and it might even be like a like a charity or not for profit, and maybe they have a limited amount of budget. They rely on people to give to them, and oh, not and and they and they have to turn around and justify the expense. Oh, you you paid thirty five hundred dollars to have you know a, a ten second like radio commercial. What what's wrong with you? We we give you that money so you help other people, and you know, and then all of a sudden they might see a decline, right? So it's it's a difficult it's a difficult line to walk. And you know what? That that I uh, to to uh, add on to his comment was, um, you want the exposure. I mean, it's different playing in your basement or playing in your garage, right? To nobody than to getting out and playing in front of a crowd, right? It, yep. it, so there's a it's a night and day scenario. So um, you only get better by doing stuff like that. So, but yeah, if you can't do it, why not? Right. And these are some of the the you know um, when we did the criteria for the bands, we asked them to send in in a brief bio about them. And you know, yeah, we we want to see the guys that are trying to make the industry better instead of the ones that are just trying to you know get to the top the fastest. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't think it's ever really been about us getting to the top and getting played regularly. I think it's more just be like, man, I'm I'm not really. I, I would rather I would be happy to play music and just make a living at it. Forget, you know, if I could make my fifty thousand dollars a year or whatever I need to make to live, I I don't really care if I'm playing in a bunch yeah. of dives around it or if I have to you know play all around Manitoba and drive to Dauphin and and drive to Brandon yeah. and and do that circuit. I have no problem doing that as long as I'm making the the cash to live. But I can't do yeah. it at a loss, right? Yeah. And I I I don't really care. I mean, if I if I make it big i just want to be able to live and, See, and that was one of the questions that we, we we said to the artist making it big what does it mean to you mm -hmm. right yeah. um and it was it was interesting the the different comments that 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 came back because kyle from load said the same thing he says i'm not looking to make a million dollars if i could make what i'm making now at my day job that's making it big yeah um 
So our expectations are not huge. They we just you know, uh, Lady Lee uh, said that uh, she wants to be paid what she's worth, right? Yep. And I and I I get it, right? I, I I totally totally get it. It's it's you know the industry. Um, yeah, no, sorry, I had a squirrel moment there. I forgot where where I was going with this. So uh, it's all good, man. Uh, but <laughs> it's 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 all good. Um, yeah, so as we as we dug deeper into the documentary, and, and it was funny because we even reached out to uh, some officials, you know, to get their, uh, the documentary was supposed to be this. It was supposed to be a documentary, okay? Now, unfortunately, funding and, and uh, lack of interest turned it into a showcase because people didn't want to be involved. Right. It was it was like, I don't want to do that. It's it's not worth it. Um, so we reached out to a lot of key officials, you know, uh, that are in the industry to speak. Um, no, nope, nobody wanted to. So it, it, it kind of told us we're fighting a, 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 a battle here. Right. Doing what we're doing, because we're trying to do something that we believe strongly in and we're getting crapped on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So I can I can only imagine what artists like yourselves are 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 dealing with uh, on a daily basis, trying to get that next gig or trying to you know get that record deal, which pretty much doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it was as the deeper the deeper that we got, we were getting more and more discouraged uh, with the with the whole process. Um, you asked why did why did we do it? Well, because music is fun. Music is yeah. supposed to be fun, right? Uh, what you see, it, it, it's fun. It's it's all the crap that you have to deal with uh, behind the scenes that uh, frustrate the piss out of you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know, will we do another one? Yes. Right. And I know that's part of your question. Uh, sorry that you're going to ask. Would we do another one? Yes. The problem that we find is nobody wants to sponsor anything like this right so mm-hmm. i've i've exhausted my bank account uh you know doing the first one i don't want to have to keep spending my own money to to promote the artist yeah. but do i feel strongly about it absolutely can we find another sponsor uh, it's tough it's yeah. really tough. well Nobody- what's you know, it's it's really interesting because this this parallels a lot with uh kind of what happened in the punk scene in the in the late i want to say late 90s early 2000s with like the uh the warped tour right and Mm -hmm. uh you know and and this is something that's this this is just like i thought this was uniquely a punk thing i think it's just an an independent artist thing because we we've kind of touched on it a little bit am i going to sell out sell out my values so that i can um so that i i can have have my money in my record deal well if i'm doing it just for a record deal yeah, I probably shouldn't should reevaluate. If I'm doing yeah. it because I want to modify it so that I get more gigs and I get more money and I don't have to worry about eating lunchables every day, yes, I that is a, a valid change. Now, what was happening with the Warp Tour is all of a sudden they got Samsung and Target and then all these big companies to sponsor to make sure that the uh, um, you know the the vans are running, the buses are there, the the sound systems are, are running and then all of a sudden they got backlash from the fans and other indie or indie pop, punk bands who hadn't quite made it saying oh you guys are just a bunch of sellouts and you're just a bunch of corporate and you're corporatizing our music and this that and the other thing and it's like um yes but we also like to shower and we like to eat and we like to have money to make a cd to get what we want out so at some point you're going to have to find a balance between that. And if you want to sit there and be grouchy about it, fine. You're probably not going to go anywhere. And I, I'm done being that grouchy guy in the corner, right? I, I, I don't, I'm not ready to say, okay, screw this. We're going to make it sound like this because that's how they made money and this is the formula. No, I'm not about that. But I am about, hey, if the musical taste isn't what we're, we want, maybe I should change so that – change a little bit. So the people will say, oh, hey, I kind of like that. What else do they have on offer? And then they can find the old album and they say, oh, I kind of like that you know, too. 
business owner, I take, you know, if I was in a band, I would take that as a business. The band is the business. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, we want to make money. We want to do more gigs. We want to sell more merch. Tackle it as a business, not as a, hey, let's just go out and have some fun. Because once you get in that business mindset, um, you will find that you will move forward, right? And, mm-hmm. and you will. And you may not get all the gigs, but you're going to get the better gigs out of the out of the you know the ones that you choose. Um, so that's my my philosophy is, is I would approach it as a business, right? The band yeah. is a business. So actually, uh, one of our uh, our long term f- uh, fans, uh, and part of the reason is we always we always do obviously do this. this is a labor of love for us. We don't get paid for this, but we we have some really hardcore fans, and that's what's that? I'm not getting paid. <laughs> I'll buy you coffee later. <laughs> one of our long term, uh, one of our long term fans, Shalim, who's actually been with us probably since year one of us uh, playing together, has actually has an interesting question. Chris, did you ever think about doing uh, a GoFundMe or a, a Patreon or some of those online things to fund your uh, fund your efforts for this documentary? We, it's it's interesting. Yes, we did. Yes, we did try. Uh, we didn't get any response. Did we work it properly? Um, that would have been our second approach at GoFundMe. Um, we tackled corporate businesses, uh, businesses that wanted to to you know get exposure. Then we also came up with uh, a simple: here, you want to support it, five bucks, something something minimal, five bucks, and we didn't get any response. Um, and which was, again, part of the, does nobody care about the music? We started getting that that feel. So, yes, we did try the GoFundMe approach. It was, it was here's the deal with GoFundMe and, and a lot of these uh, other, other ones, is you have to work it for a good year, right? Mm-hmm. It, it takes a long time to nurture it, to get the exposure, to get it to get it where you want it to be. Uh, we just didn't have the time. When we decided that we uh, that we were ready to go after the year of planning, it was within a week that we were, that we were in production. So mm-hmm. we didn't have it. Um, do I wish GoFundMe would work better for uh, cases like this? Absolutely, absolutely. But that's a, that's a good comment because that is something that we wouldn't have touched on was the, the GoFundMe approach because there's a lot of musicians that use that. Uh, so if it works for them, uh, what are we doing wrong? Right? We have to we have to look at you know how can we make it better? Yeah. Well, I guess that begs the diff- the the question to ask is if you're you're planning on doing another one that's that's already been stated, right? And yes. bank account's a little thin, and if yeah. you're saying it's taken a bit about a year to to do it, so let's why not start it now? Hey, okay, you so want to do I'll this? Have- <laughs> let's do this. Uh, to to all, all of your viewers out there, we need a corporate sponsor. If you know somebody, step up and 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 let's make this this happen because we could do our here. Let me let me back up a little bit. When we called it the Canadian uh, music uh, documentary, our plan was to go across Canada and do a show in every major city. Okay. Um, after after talking to to Manitoba Music and finding out how many musicians are here and and comments that we got here, we could do a whole series on Manitoba alone, and I and the crew wouldn't have mm-hmm. to travel across Canada. Um, so yeah, we want to keep doing it because there's a lot of musicians that you know want the exposure, need the exposure, um, and if we can and if we can do do that. Um, let's let's go for it. Uh, you know we're we're on game. Uh, we're bo- you know on board for for this because uh, at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, so, it's yeah. it is great fun to be up on stage yeah. and performing. So. Actually, yeah. I was going to jump in. There's a little uh, conversation going on in the uh, comments there um, about the free markets and shouldn't the free markets be deciding? Um, and well, the, the answer to that is there's no such thing as the free markets. Uh, <laughs> you've got a handful of companies at the top that are deciding who, who uh, plays what we, and what music we get, um, what gets played on the radio. And even locally, um, we've got um, 
that kind of that kind of uh, trickles down to the fact that music is now so free or so cheap that you can get you can watch listen to endless pieces of music on these massive um, um, YouTube, sing- Google Play, like, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever you want. Yeah, thing, Spotify. Yeah, where, where you get a, you know, like a zero 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 point or one percent or whatever, a tiny little penny, a percentage of a penny. Uh, and the the music has been devalued, and not, it hasn't been devalued because it's there has no value in it. Uh, it's just that we have got a handful of people that are deciding, um, yep. are, are controlling the market, and that's big business, and and it's all corporate. Um, we stopped listening to the radio stations for one reason because I'm tired of listening to the same 30 songs every damn day, mm-hmm. right? Um, and they're not looking. I'll give you an example. We approached uh, one one uh, network and we said to them, "Hey, we got to, because we used to do band promotions as well and and uh, and uh, stuff like that." So so we said, "Hey, we got this band that that really is really good and we want to have them aired on the radio." Our comment back was was okay. If we play them, who out of the top thirty do we take out? They're yeah. the ones paying the bills, right? Yeah. So you'll never get the exposure yeah. with these guys. The the internet radio stations, the university radio stations. Yes, you you will. But to get onto a major right radio station, um, they don't want it. Right. Yeah. Well, if you're if you're looking at any of the major radio stations in Winnipeg, and I'm sure every market's the same. I think you hit it right on the on the nail. These people bring in people, other listeners that make our advertisers happy because they pay for the ad space, right? Yep. So they're all just taking money from one to the next and paying out, and and that's understandable. I I actually can't fault them for that answer. That that's a logical business that's answer, a, and I I can't fault them for that. But I can be yep. mad because it's like, well. Where do I go now? So yeah. I can I can go to UMFM and I can go to CKUW and I can go to a few of the other independent places around around Winnipeg, and that might make get me noticed locally, but where do I go from there? Right. See, okay. So let's let's talk about something that uh, that we've been working on now for a little while. Since we started this documentary, we've been finding we're getting frustrated. So what we decided to do about uh, three months ago was. We, in, a, in, in a production meeting, we said, what if we were to open up an internet radio station mm-hmm. that specifically is designed to promote local music only, right? Yeah. And we thought, hey, that was interesting. So we, 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 we started digging deeper into it. Again, where did the funding, where does the funding come from? We all need to be paid. The announcers need to be paid. Um, and and we're, we're back to that, okay, we need funding. We need sponsors. We need this. We need that, um, and 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 nobody wants to. Um, if if we had it our way, the, the radio station would have been up this summer. We're just running into to roadblock after roadblock. And would artists? Here, let me throw something else at you. If we couldn't find sponsors, would artists do a pay to play? If there was a yearly uh, uh, a yearly fee that you had to pay. Right, like a SoCan fee or something like that. Would the artists do that to have their uh, music aired on a uh, a local radio station? So we're 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 digging deeper into it to see if it actually is a viable option uh, as a business approach. Um, but that's another way that we could promote the uh, the the music, right? The local music. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 so interesting. We got out of the music industry um, a long time ago because there was no money to be made in it, and 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 now we're back doing this again. And uh, uh, and I'm 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 not surprised, but I am of of all the the crap that still goes on in in this. But it's it's just part of the game. Yep. You know, I, I actually really love that idea of uh, having just a, a local online. Hey, here's a Manitoba for Manitoba, like Manitoba local for Manitobans only. That's all you're going to hear on here is local people, we, right? We that would be on, awesome. We, we belong to a couple of uh, musician uh, uh, pages on Facebook, and we did a, a, a questionnaire, and we asked the question, would you pay to play? Majority of them said no. 
Mm-hmm. So we we kind of just dropped it and, and left it alone because obviously you're not looking to promote, you know, there's there's many different avenues that you can't promote your music. Will yeah. they work in in collaboration with all of them? Yes, they will. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, well, it's, it could be a lot in the uh, how you ask the question. Um, yeah. I think we've done a show about don't pay to play. Um, yeah. But there's a difference between investing in yourself, like, like a workers' cooperative or something. Yeah, where we yeah. all chip in, and then we work together, and we can promote the the yeah. station. That's kind of a different. So maybe we're doing it as a co-op. Yeah, right. Everybody's yeah. uh, part owner. Well, uh, the thing is, though, with a co-op, eventually you have to get be able to get paid out, right? So, like, if you. And again, it comes down to what is it is making for me. Well, if my annuals are fifty bucks a year, just like Manitoba Music charges me, right? If I make my fifty bucks back and make another twenty five on top of that, which is not an unreasonable goal to set, no. then that's fine. And it yep. gets people promoted. And then all of a sudden, yep. you know, the the owners of the Goodwill. Uh, or the handsome daughter, or some of those other places that are like, well, we only want bands with track records or bands that we like. They hear it and they say, oh man, I actually kind of like these guys or or whatever, right? See, and you know, just just like your show, right? Um, if if this was Winnipeg based, if your show was Winnipeg based only, right? You're only going to get so many following, yeah. right? You have people. I'm sure you have followers from all over the world now. The, the internet radio station would do the same thing. You would yeah, get yeah. you would get people from uh, everywhere listening to your music that are going to start following you. At the end of the day, you're going to start making money. Yeah. If we sidetrack the uh, the documentary, we we just uh, having a, a, uh, a discussion on music. <laughs> hey, <laughs> so welcome to the stream of the show. It's all over the oh, place. We warned you. We warned you before we went on air. And you know what? Hey, Ken, we love it. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead with your next question. I'll, I'll uh, try and be brief. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we got. Uh, we don't have a hard stop. Um, no. No, we don't. Now there was because uh, we, we were talking um, early earlier, and you have some news about uh, Shaw being interested in yeah. the documentary. Yeah. It's it's we um, as we did this documentary, we thought, you know what? It's a shame that nobody else is going to see it. I shouldn't say that that we're just doing it online. Uh, we uh, went and had a meeting with Shaw, uh, and uh, they actually said to us, hey, we saw your documentary, or we, shot, we, we saw the film. Would you be interested in airing it? And I was like, sure, absolutely. What do we, what do we have to, you know, who do we have to kill to get this to happen? Uh, because it's a start, it's a stepping stone. It's, 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 you know, a, a beginning process. A celebration. It, Yay. Congrats, man. <laughs> um, that just means others will as, uh, will as well. Um, we had to alter it a little bit. Uh, the intro was a little long and uh, the promotions were, were a little, you know, so we, we, we cut it down. We chopped it up a little bit. So that was, that, was, that was since the, uh, the, 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 uh, when you, uh, the private showing? Was that before that or after or since? That, that was uh, after that. After, okay. okay. After the private uh, screening. Yeah. So, I mean, Shaw said, like, give us six episodes, right? And we will air them. And let's do a test run at this. And we will run it three times a day. And, Dude, and- that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, great. Perfect. Where else could you get uh, More that- celebration. Woohoo! You know- <laughs> 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 right on, Ken. I know it's it's Shaw's community television and it's local and 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 that's that's but it's a start, right? It's yeah. a place that we we now have to air the shows, right? And what happens if CTV sees it or 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 Global sees it and they go, hey, we want to carry this as well? And you know what? It's it's all uphill, right? It's yeah. all uphill. It's 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 so, fantastic. So yeah, we're excited to uh, to work with them. Uh, we're excited to uh, be part of it. Um, and at the end of the day, we give the artist exposure, yeah. right? And yeah, that's sure. the whole thing. This is that's all we wanted from the beginning. So so is Shaw sure going to help fund it? These these are other additional episodes, or is that still <laughs> on you? No, no. We'll see how um, well it does. Maybe they. Hey, you know what? I mean, I wouldn't hold your breath about it, but if they they get a good viewing, Shaw might yeah. turn around and say, "Hey, do you want to make they, more?" They, 
they that would be nice if we could if we could say you know Shaw's sponsoring this and and we don't have to fork out a dime that would be fantastic or that even fifty percent man even if they cover a good chunk of it right who cares yeah. about doing it all you know I'll but meet you halfway. <laughs> Here's the other thing. If if uh, if we were to find a corporate sponsor, now the corporate sponsor is getting airtime as well, and they're getting recognition as as well. So you know, it's it's interesting that you know, I'm excited. Is is really what it boils down to? It's it's a start. Um, you have to start somewhere, and and let's keep growing this. Right? Oh, is yeah. is what we're doing. Um, funny thing is is when we decide. When we were banging on doors looking for sponsors, as you can imagine, everybody says, no, 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 no. We started thinking, should are we seeing something? Should we be backing out of this and not doing this because nobody else is interested, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it was frustrating uh, to us. And we, we had a, we think we have a really good sellable idea, right? But nobody wanted to 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 you know step on board. So yeah, if we could find a sponsor or a couple sponsors that would be interested, uh, you know, like Quest Music or something like that here in the city, uh, Yamaha or, or or who have you, um, you know, Bob's Pizza that would be a, I don't care who it is, right? Uh, let's let's get them on board and let's just keep filming, right? Yeah. The longer we wait, it, it makes it more difficult. Yeah, for sure, right? Yeah, um, I think uh, Shalim has a question. Uh, did you uh, approach CBC? Uh, he says they have a mandate for local music. Okay, yes, I uh, approached CBC and they never replied. Oh, what's this one? I approached, I, actually, we approached every network and every radio station in the city. Oh, wow. And none of them were interested in, in taking this on. Right. Which is which is I just I find it very odd. We're friendly Manitoba. Right. And yet nobody wants to to get involved with. You know, it's like seeing a homeless person on the on the street. You turn the other way because you don't want to look at it. Right. Yep. Music is here to stay. Right. We, we, we know that. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, no, nobody got back to us, which is which is a shame. Right. Yep. <clears throat> It's a little strange. I find that to be a little strange, and I, and it's always made me question about again, like you know, we. I don't want to kick a dead horse too many times. It's just like it just seems like you know, SoCan and uh, and Manitoba Music and all these grant programs. It's like, hey, here you go. You can you can fulfill your musical dreams. We got the cash. We'll dole it out. And I submit it, and I get nothing back. I get no response, or they say, "Oh, I'm sorry, you're not what we're looking for." Well, yeah, what it do you is mean? What, what, or, or something like that. Is it, are are it, you sponsored by by a, a recording studio? Like you don't want to want me to, you know, who cares what the art the art is? This is a comment I made when we were off off air. It, who cares what the art is? If the art is smashing a typewriter with a sledgehammer and then throwing peanut butter on it, that's somebody's art. And if you're saying you're about art, <laughs> support the art. <laughs> it, now, it, you know what? I find it very, again, frustrating. Uh, I can only imagine what the artists go through on a, on a daily, you know, uh, daily, you know. Uh, it, it's nobody wants to. I haven't heard any good things coming from the grants uh, personally. Uh, people that we've talked to, it's either declined or we, you know, didn't meet the criteria or or so on and so on. Um, I'd like to hear a happy ending, uh, you know, yeah. on, on on these things. But but you know they they're yeah no I don't know I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tough and frustrating uh, um, process time. It's certainly a frustration time to be a musician. But uh, I think we have a a tendency to think back oh if it was like the old days where the musicians got uh yeah look, but you know independent music the music scene has always been like this it yeah always has it's always a struggle uh, to, yeah. to so get when something I was new playing in england in the uh early 1980s we were paid, we were paid almost nothing <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah it was pennies yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's you know you were paid better back in in the 80s and and uh and uh, the 70s um 
Yeah, I just I, 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 it, it. Yeah, I don't know how we can we can make it better yeah. um, if people don't see the the benefit of of this. So I'm hoping with the uh, with the documentary that we uh, that we did um, or or the showcase uh, that people enjoyed it. First and foremost, mm -hmm. did you enjoy it? We heard a lot of comments back about, oh, the sound sucks, right? Um, but when you're on a budget and yeah. you're working with, with local sound guys uh, that are running the, uh, the, the uh, audio boards, you're subject to their experience, right? Um, did we do the best that we could? No, we could have multi-tracked it. Uh, would have cost a lot more. But again, at the end of the day, we had a budget that we had to strictly stay by. Yeah. Um, and I think that it it sound. I think it sounds decent. No, right? no. Uh, no. You know, yeah. I, I have, and this isn't something I'm gonna. I'm gonna. If if you if you and I, and this is better if I were to if you were to ask me an opinion as we sit down for like beer and chicken wings some some night. Ken, I think ABC could have probably been improved. Did it wreck the film for me? No, but maybe this yeah. is something you consider for your next one as just as an objective opinion. I enjoyed yeah. the film. I yeah. thought it was great. I have a history of sound uh, production. I've I've done live events. I do a lot of times end up doing sound for our gigs. Mm -hmm. I, you know what? I hear it and it's like, I would have done it a little differently, but I can still hear what's going on. Yeah. Would I yeah. change the EQ on the vocals? Probably. But that's my yeah. ear as opposed to the guy who's doing it, right? I and, got little and, and, little nits to pick and it's, it's not the end of the film, right? Yeah, everybody hears it a little differently. Our, our protocol was make sure that the vocals were a little louder than the music mm -hmm. so that you could hear it uh, and and we could, uh, you know, kind of work with it a little bit uh, that way. Yes. Could we have made it better? Yes. Do we know what we need to do to make it better for next time? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, it's just a matter of uh, finding the right sound, guys. Right? We... we I don't know if Luce told you this story. We we started filming her. She was at uh, at uh, <laughs> the, uh, right sound guy can. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, we're gonna hold you to it then. Um, we Done. were filming Luce at, at a place in Osborne Village called um, the Cavern. Is that oh, yeah. what it's called? Woo -hoo -hoo! Yeah, we yeah I love the Cavern. <laughs> Let me tell you, fuck was that sound guy bad? Oh my Sorry. god, he who'd you brutal. who'd you have doing it? Was it James? I don't know, some kid. No, oh, okay, never we mind. It wasn't up, James then. Okay, we ended up going out filming. It was a wasted evening, right? Oh. Because the sound was brutal. He couldn't give us a line out. Didn't know how to give us a line out. Uh, yeah, and what? it was it was it was it was bad. Would I go back there ever again? No. You know Unless what? We were I, our sound guy uh, with our own equipment. No. Right? No, but these okay. are the, these are some of the things that you, yeah. you, you, you deal with when filming. When we were scouting for locations, uh, priority one was sound, right? Yeah. Because you could have a grungy looking cavern type of place and it, it sets the mood for the music, especially if it's grunge music or something yeah. like that. Um, but it was the sound. We had to have the acoustics. The sound had to be as best as we could do it for, for film. And oh man, which places can we use? And then we'd make our list up, and it was like, okay, that place won't work. That place won't work. This sound guy's no good. This sound guy's no good. But we ended up using, and I'll, and I'll give a, a shout out to uh, the guys at the uh, Bulldog Event Center. Uh, we ended up uh, doing the filming there, and uh, and and this, I, I, at the end of the day, I think the sound was good, right? Um, it fit everything, and and they really. Uh, after we sold them on the uh, the film uh, idea, uh, they thought that it was something that they would definitely be be interested in, right? But finding those really good sound guys, I went to uh, I went to Long McQuaid, and I said to uh, the people there, "Who's your best sound guy? I need to hire a really good band sound guy, right?" Mm -hmm. Had a couple of suggestions, but nothing nothing ever panned out. Are we just in the wrong city, or are we? Uh... I I don't know. It's it's tough to say. And you know what? It it bothers me because I've had, and and it's <coughs> I find it really strange because I've played the cavern. I want to say at least twenty times. Okay, with okay. between Mark and I played there once. Mm -hmm. Between the other band, 
probably at, at least a dozen times, even more probably, right? James, the guy who kind of heads up, always does sound for us and always does a stellar job. The guy knows the board, knows the system, knows his limitations, what he can and can't do. And so when you said, yeah, crap sound at the set, the cavern, you would have noticed that I made a reaction like, really? <laughs> really? Because like... Oh, it, it, it wasn't James. Okay, because because oh, yeah. and I would I would say before you say no to it, uh, maybe we just say, hey, you know what? As long as we get James doing the sound, we'll we'll different. we'll try it. We'll try it at yeah. least, right? Because yeah. it really surprised me. And you're right, the cavern is a broody, dumpy, meant to look crappy place. Yeah. But yeah. I've always had great success there. And James is one of those guys. I say, I our, one of our first shows, we talked about being at the cavern, and it's like, yeah, it's brooding, it's foreboding, but you know what? It's a place where James will always pay you. He gives you free beer tickets, uh, above and beyond what he's paying. He treats his musicians good. It's not the nicest so, place to play in well, terms of like what it looks like, but. You know, we had the wrong guy because even we would email him ahead of time and say, we need this, 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 this. And all we did was get grief and and, and, mm. and argument back through the email. So we knew it was going to be bad. We just didn't realize it was going to be that bad. Sorry, yeah. Cavern. Uh, yeah. You know, we're not uh, crapping on, on, on your venue. No, no, right? no. They're, they're usually pretty good. I'm sorry that you had such a bad experience. But you know what? I had a, a bad experience with the Ellis Theater and Cafe. Uh, before new management took over, uh, it was at like a battle of the bands kind of thing, and whoever they hired to do sound just had no clue what they were doing. And and, and this, you get this everywhere, so you just have to know, you know, what you're doing. Okay, who do I need for sound? Oh, we're good at sound. We know we're not the greatest, um, so you find you know somebody that's really good. And and at the end of the day, um, yeah. It's 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 what it is. So yeah, it it could have been better. Um, it's a learning experience. It's what it is. All right. So yeah, we know now what not to do next time. Hey, sure. <laughs> you know what? That's sometimes that's just as valuable, and that means you're going to get the second the second one's going to be that much better, right? I, I'll I'll throw out the encouragement to you. One of my favorite docs about the LA punk scene was the decline of Western civilization. The first one that they did had a lot of bands that I liked. The quality's not the greatest. the The flow is there, but they're limited by cheap equipment. They could have produced a lot better for for the, even in the time. Performance is all right. But the second one that they did, it just got that much better. So they l obviously learned and got better. They made some money and got better cameras. Next time they yep. got better mics, right? Mm -hmm. So you, if, you if it, work if, that way. Yep. So Yeah, absolutely. If, if anything, um, and it was funny because I said to, to Barry, uh, Barry Player, I said to him after we finished editing, I said to him, man, you look like a freaking star. Right. And he was all excited and all excited because the clarity. Right. And if you if you look at at uh, at Barry's footage, uh, it that's the best he's ever looked. That's the you know, and I'm not saying that we, you know, did something, you know, totally amazing. But every other event uh, a venue is dark and you can't really see um, it looks like a concert. Right. Mm -hmm. Visually. And and uh, he came back and said, "Oh, but the sound sucks, right?" So it's like, oh, typical musician, eh? Never happy. Well, it's that artist part of us, right? We're never really fully happy. Yeah. I listen to some yeah. of our stuff that we recorded. And I'm like, oh, I could have done better there. Could have done better. And, <laughs> and you know, the tough part with this is is we told them you have one chance you to do it live, right? Um, don't screw it up, right? Because yeah. what you get is what you get. Um, and they all did really well, right? So let me ask you. Let me ask you this question: uh, the two of you, who was your favorite? Um, you go I, ahead. You go ahead. And, uh, well, Luce, remember, uh, I have to say, Luce. Uh, Luce was obviously. <laughs> um, um, I think that. Um, yeah, was it? Um, what was his name Barry Player? Yeah, uh, Barry, he Barry, was yeah. having so much fun, it and was, that was so conveyed in was. his performance. And like, he was enjoying every second of it, yeah. and that just kind of pulled and, you. And, in. And, and part with that was at the beginning he, he something happened to his foot pedal and it didn't work right and then the hands went up and oh right 
but this these are things that we look for right having fun on stage mm -hmm. right it's, it's all about that okay so you like you like barry who who did you like so I, I knew I was going to enjoy seeing loose and load perform. I just, cause I, I, we'd done the promo with them, but uh, Barry G player stole it for me. And I think, I don't think loose is going to be offended when we say, say that. I mean, obviously we're going to plug loose cause you know, friend of the show and a great, just becoming a good friend in, in general, but Barry just like, he nailed it. Like, yeah. Okay. So maybe he had some technical issues with the sound or whatever. But when I when I see someone like Barry play his guitar and he's just sitting there and he's like, all the crap that I've gone through through the week to get to this point where I can sit and I can do something that I absolutely love, like to see that is just as much of a part of the performance as the technical moving your fingers across the fretboard and how much you, you push uh, or how hard you stroke the, the strings or whatever your instrument is, whatever technicalities of it are, are all important. But to see him lost in his performance like that yep. is to me, I was like, yeah, as a musician, I, I, I don't know if I convey that and I have to get there. Right. His, we were shot. I've, I've known Barry for quite a while. Um, but the stuff that he can do with his guitar, you know, can bring a tear to your eye. This, mm -hmm. It's just like, holy crap. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, this is why uh, when we did the artist showcase, it was originally, well, it was meant to be on the front, uh, front singer only. So that's why we focused on, on loose. That's why we focused on Barry. That's why we focused on uh, lady Lee. Uh, it was the front, uh, the front, the, the the singer only um but uh, yeah it's i've i've now i now have four new genres of music that i really really enjoy that i didn't know existed right, right? <laughs> before this yeah. documentary so so even i'm learning hey this is kind of cool and uh, and it's like oh this is an, an interesting song um we have uh we're doing some uh, music videos for for loose and load uh, this year, so we're going to be uh, producing uh, some some for her. Um, but you know what? At the end of the day, I look at it this way: corporate pays the bills for filming. We know that, yeah. right? But this is where the fun begins. When you can go out and you can shoot a music video, or you can shoot a a live venue, or or something like that, that's fun. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you're when you're having fun, you're not working. And yeah. this is really what I think when it comes down to to Barry and I watch him play. The world doesn't exist yeah. when he's on stage. Yeah. It's just him yeah. and his guitar and it shows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's the that's the part that was so engaging for me. Obviously, I love listening to to loose. I love listening to Bruce Lee and and all those different like uh, their CD is great, but. I, I was watching Barry and I'm like, that is a guy who who's enjoying what he's doing. That is a guy. He doesn't care if, that there's an election coming at this point in time. He doesn't care that there's, you know, holes in the street that can swallow your car. He doesn't care about all the stuff, the minutia of like life. He cares about playing his song and playing it well. Yeah. And, and that was well, so conveyed and it was just so striking. And it was so yeah. honest. That I just love it. I'll give you a, a, a backstory to just before him going on on stage. Um, I don't remember what time he was supposed to be on seven o'clock or something like that. Ten to seven, he's still not there, Ooh. and he still has to. I'm <laughs> going, what the hell? Then he barges through the door, apologizing. Apolog My van broke down. My van broke down. Right? It's downtown <laughs> right now. He he knows his van's going to get towed. Um, but the show has to go on. Yeah, no By the kidding. Set up, you couldn't tell that 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 you know he was having all these mental issues, or you know, of the van breaking oh. down, and, and uh, it was all about the show. Yeah, and that was it was about. And when you get artists that that can can do that, like I notice when I watch when I watch Loose, um, she's kind of in her own world. Yep. When she on stage that's right uh, it, yeah. it, it it's it's <laughs> interesting to watch her because yeah again nothing else exists yeah it's just that moment in time yeah and I, I i loved watching that about loose and and seeing um 
oh, I'm spacing on his name, the guitar player. Kyle. Kyle, that's it. You know, he, he's very, very, they're conveying it the same way, but it was, or something similar, but it was just the way that, I, I mean, maybe it was just because they were so focused on, on, on Barry G player. When when he takes it right, because you kind of got you got loose and Kyle at the same time, and maybe if you focus just on loose, we might I might have the same thing to say exactly the same thing to see about her. But I was enjoying I very much enjoyed listening to them play. I very much enjoyed listening to seeing Kyle play and hearing loose sing. That's always a treat, right? Yeah. But it, just because we were so focused, okay. Who cares what's going on back there? I don't care about the drummer. I don't care about the bass player. I don't care about what amps they're using. I don't care about that. Here's Barry playing his guitar. And I'm just focused on Barry. I probably would have had the exact same response if it was if we did the same thing with Carrie or Loose. What you know, I guess yeah. it's Loose because it's a stage name, right? So uh, that it would have been probably the same experience. And and that's just it. And it we didn't do a rehearsal for this show, right? So there was no okay, move here, stand here, do this. Uh, we gave them a set of instructions on you have a five by five area to stay in. Don't go out of this five by five zone. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, and then you see Hamfist. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <it was> just, <laughs> trying to keep focus on him, he was just running all over the yeah. place. It was. Uh, it was. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, so yeah, it was a uh, one shot, and and let's get this as raw as we could get it uh, without rehearsing it to make it look phony. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think they all did really, really well. Uh, it worked. Uh, it worked great for what we were looking for uh, for the end result. Um, yeah, uh, it was just yeah, it was cool. Uh, so uh, you kind of got onto a, a key point was uh, um, no, you knew you kind of knew what you wanted there and kind of played off. Was did the documentary as a whole come out the way you would have envisioned it, or did you kind of yeah, have to make some question. changes no. as you went? No, it it it. it we had a vision on paper, and, and this is one of the things that you struggle with, is we had we had the storyboard, uh, we had uh, the vision on paper. On paper, it looked, it looked good, okay? Mm -hmm. In our mind, we knew what we wanted to do. Um, at the end of the day, all these people that were supposed to be on the show as well, to, 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 uh, that we were supposed to interview, um, didn't end up coming on. So we were scrambling, trying to pull this together. Uh, did we want to do more uh, narration, more voiceover uh, on this? Absolutely. But we were missing so many uh, component components of this um, in the 11th hour that we had to scramble and make it to what it is. So yeah, did it, did it, did it start off totally different? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Did it end up the way we wanted it? We're happy with it. Uh, you know, we're, we're definitely happy with it because at the end of the day, uh, we think we promoted the artists um, in 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 the best possible light, uh, giving them their their ten minutes of, of fame uh, with a lot of the questions that we asked them um, and getting the responses that they wanted. This was their their, their moment to say what was on their mind. Yeah. Right. And whether it was, you know, I, I, I like to be, uh, you know, eat red Smarties and, and uh, you know, pour chocolate sauce over my head. I don't care what it was, but you we gave them the opportunity to speak yeah. their mind. Yeah. So how right? long did it take you to get that out of them? Was there a, was this like a, a were they open right away or was there a whole lot of soft, softball questions to soften them up? Or how, how did you do that? Yeah. We gave them the questions about a week in advance because okay. we didn't want to throw them for a loop. So we mm -hmm. said, uh, "Think of your response, okay? Think of what you would what you would really want to say." And we told them that we want them to be honest. Don't say what you think we want you to say. Say what you want to say. Just no swearing, right? Uh, that was <laughs> the uh, that was the only thing. Um, it was interesting because on a few of the, the 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 interviews, some of the stuff that you didn't see in the documentary, uh, Kirsten and uh, and uh, uh, one other artist, we asked them, "Who was your favorite musician? Give me a song, right?" And then I told them to sing it, just to loosen <laughs> them up. To, to, <laughs> it was uh, fun stuff because. 
not everybody's used to being in front of a camera. It's very, yeah. it's very scary, right? Yeah. It's very, yeah. oh wow, what do I, I don't know about this. Yeah. Um, so we had to loosen them up. Uh, Kyle and uh, and uh, Luce uh, didn't need any loosening up at all. Yeah. They uh, they had a they had they were really good with that. Yeah. Uh, Kirsten was more uh, from Hamfist was more. Um, he was trying to be politically correct in a lot of the things that he was saying. Right. Uh, Barry was just, um, Barry was Barry. If yeah. you know Barry, you know, that was his, his, you know, it's, it's, it's all about, you know what I can do. So it, 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 I think filming the, the interviews took about six hours from start to finish. Right. Um, and it wasn't bad. We give them time slots, you know, you'd be here at one, you'd be here at two, you'd be here at three. And we kind of, you know, flowed through it. Uh, Luce was uh, nice enough to uh, donate her her house uh, for filming, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was kind of, uh, you know, a, a nice approach, a nice visual for us. Instead of having a different look throughout uh, the whole thing, we wanted it to be consistent. Right. Now, did you guys notice? Now, you didn't even notice this, and 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 uh, Bush Stones and the Lucky, they put a lot of effort into this. Behind them, in the uh, in the cabinet, they have merch. Oh yes, you guys, you <laughs> yeah, that was that's pretty smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they put uh, they put some merch in the background as as the the uh, product placement visual. Um, so I was kind of curious how many people would notice that and how many wouldn't. Now, when you watch it again, you'll be looking just for that. <laughs> you'll never not notice it now. <laughs> There's the hat. There's the jacket, and uh, and and so on. Um, but yeah, it took about six hours to to film that. Uh, the the event uh, itself uh, took uh, I'm going to say about six hours again by the time we were done uh, with, with that. And then putting it together, editing took me about a week, week and a half. So it wasn't too long, right? But did it turn out the way we wanted? No. Um, are we happy with it? Yes, because it's a starting point. Yeah. Right. It's a starting point. And, and from there, we just move on and move right. on and yeah. get better and get better. Yeah. Right? Yeah, as long as we learn. Uh, I'm just um, what did I say the name of the documentary again. Uh, Chris actually prompted us. We should have been saying this every second sentence just so people know. <laughs> uh, Canadian Homegrown Musician Show Showcase. Uh, there is a link in the uh, the events for the show on the uh, Colorado Phil Show page and the It's All in the Mind page as well. And I was trying to find it to copy and paste it into the chat. And, my browser froze, so uh, <laughs> so we'll add that. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, it, it should be it'll be on the YouTube uh, yeah, um, show the notes. Is, Must be all there. that ice on the line is frozen up your browser. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. bad joke. Yeah. Wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we posted this to Facebook a few times in in different uh, chat groups and everything. Um, it I'd like to to hear other people's opinions too on what on yeah. what they think because you know. Is it the best, you know, that uh, that it could have been? No. Does it promote them? Yes. Uh, what could we do? Well, we know what we can do better. We don't need we don't need advice on what we can do better. Um, will people watch it? We were watching uh, the Google Analytics uh, on this, and roughly about seven minutes in, people were were shutting it off, uh, and we looked at the seven minutes in and, and to see what uh, what that mm -hmm. was. Um, and then it uh, people would go back and watch it, uh, you know, because it is a long doc. It's it's not long, but it is long enough, right? Um, if if you don't like the first uh, act, uh, maybe people are, are shutting it off, um, you know. Mm -hmm. And story loose, you're first. Everybody has to to you know look at it, watch it, and and and. Get their own takeaway from it right is yep. really what they have to do um hopefully we we nailed on on you know except the less the country that we hit you know different uh different uh genres that people are happy with absolutely yep. but uh yeah no you can look at it on youtube and if anybody uh can't find it uh you know go to my website and it's on there as well KenLoxton.com, yep. um, and you can uh, and you can take a look at it uh, there as well. There you go. Uh, um, just for everyone watching there, I can yep. see um, right there. Yeah, KenLoxton.com and uh, other contact information there. We'll leave that up for a few seconds there for people to take a note. 
Um, yeah, I think um, we've been going for about an hour and a half, can you believe? Our longest <laughs> really? show yet, I think, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, Just I'm not told, surprised. Told you it was going to be fun. Um, <laughs> Do, you know, here's here's what we'd like to see for the next one, because we've been doing, we've been doing you know, filming for so long. Um Doing the, the the musicians is is a new step for us. Live sound, as you know, is is brutal to, to control. Um, but at the end of the day, can you imagine if this if if this does take off with Shaw, and we start doing a weekly show, um, the exposure that the artists would get, mm -hmm. it would be you know, and everything from it could be uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of things in the works. Uh, that that are tying off of this, but the exposure on on the show and if the radio station does go as planned, um, it's just a bonus. Uh, you know, it's a win win for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, for yeah. sure, it'd be awesome. Yeah. No, <laughs> man, I'm getting all excited about this. <laughs> it, it's we come from uh, from a, a a corporate background. We do a lot of filming uh, of resorts in uh in tropical places um you know especially with the snow that we have now um i'd rather be somewhere tropical filming uh so this is the you know the local aspect of let's let's create a, a really good local show right um and uh, and and build from it so between everybody involved and and uh and for those who who just have a love for music um, we hope that we we made everybody proud because it, it, at the end of the day, um, we think it looks good, yeah. sounds okay, um, but uh, yeah, it's 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 all about showcasing and promoting the artists, right? Yeah, That's which it. definitely that uh, of all the things you know, like I said, uh, uh, things that I would are a little nits to pick, but at the end of the day, there's a room full of people who, if they didn't know load, now have heard load yeah. and i i've i know i've heard the name barry g player but i couldn't place the name i probably heard that song before now i've seen him perform it right yeah. uh and, ham fist yeah. i had never heard of him before now i've seen and him. The song, and and the song in the end credits that's barry as well yeah um you know if if anything um barry definitely takes you to a different place when he plays um and and it's it's one of his talents uh, yeah. that it is. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the at the end of the day, if you go download one of his, uh, it will pay for one of his songs, uh, and uh, and play. <laughs> he's got a new fan, right? Yeah. And that's all. It's it, that's all we ever wanted to do was yeah. if the artists start making money from stuff that we're doing, then we've done our job, right? Um, will production get better if if funding becomes more available? Absolutely. But in quality wise, I think the quality turned out really, really good, right? Mm -hmm. In regards to uh, to everything. So um, you know, thanks to uh, Peter at Texas.ca and 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 for those uh, who believed in us, um, yeah, we got uh, we're done what we needed to do. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of curious what uh, what uh, Phil uh, thought of the uh, of the documentary or or the uh, the showcase uh, because I know he's seen it, right? Um, but uh, you know, uh, it's yeah. No, we're happy. No, oh, that's great. Well, I guess we'll you'll have a chance to ask him because I think we we should we could probably go for another show or two. So <laughs> you should come back. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just, just on on a side note, we have a lot of other local uh, music uh, projects that we're working on um, that involve uh, other people here. Uh, so there's going to be more coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of, you know, can we find the right artists? To give, give you an idea, I, like I said earlier, we don't want, and cut me off whenever you have to, or just, you know, close the feed and when I disappear, <laughs> I disappear. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, as long as they're not signed artists, we can work with them, right? Because mm -hmm. legally, it, it's very difficult if somebody's already signed to a label. Well, um, and if you're signed, like, you should be getting them to promote. They should be promoting you, they right? So. Promoting uh, it was it was nice to see that Lexi from uh, Packen uh, was at the uh, the screening. Um, you know they they uh, manage a lot of uh, musicians, uh, so it was kind of nice that she was there to uh, come check out uh, you know the showing. 
Um, the only bad thing with that was Barry Player wasn't at the screening, right? Um, mm -hmm. Had the stomach flu or whatever, he couldn't show up because out of the whole thing, like I said, and it was funny because I have a, a you know a soft spot for Barry and his music because it's just it just fits. Um, but I think he looked uh, freaking amazing on on yeah. screen. Yeah. Oh Crazy. yeah. He's yeah. total class act, total, total yeah. I, I mean, he immediately made me think of like Peter Frampton or uh, some of the other like really old classic guitar, guitar yeah. guys, guitar acts. It just, yeah, right the up there. Band. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we were, uh, we were quite happy with the, with the whole, uh, you know, approach at it uh so yeah so if we could find more sponsors and i'll say that again if we could find more sponsors uh that would be great because we can continue promoting uh local musicians right so yeah yeah excellent you know i will kind of wind it down uh but before we go i just wanted to um just for posterity i've got some images here of our lovely winter so this is um so this is my internet connection <laughs> right now, this is what it looks like. So that little blob there, that little thing was actually fixed to the side of the house. So a little bit of siding has been pulled off, and that's on the ground. Um, so I had to pick that up, and so I'm surprised we're actually we're running at all. Um, where did I put those images? Of course, I can't get to them quick enough. Um, there you go. So that's uh, that's where it was plugged into the wall, laying all <laughs> on the ground. Uh, so on Friday, this tree came down pulled our power line you can probably see the power line all tight there um and you see how high the it's like what the the cables hanging on the power cable about three feet or so above the, the gazebo which has collapsed inside out this morning where is it there you go so you can actually see the the, uh, the tree is now inside the gazebo and <laughs> it's even tighter with another branch in the dog run um yeah so this is what we've been experiencing here and uh of course, that's Ryan. That's my back lane there. Uh, that my wife sent me that picture at about uh, six or seven o'clock yesterday morning. She's just getting ready to go to work. Of course, I had already been at work for a couple hours at that point, and it's just yeah. That that's the garage that's there is the one the neighbor that's directly next to me. It was the the next house over, and it, that tree is still blocking, uh, blocking the back lane. I, I'm surprised it hasn't either pulled out power or. Or killed our our internet, but we've we've been fortunate, and no fire started there either. So yay! Yeah, so far, yeah, yeah. So there, that's the that's the winter of uh, two two thousand nineteen. Started <laughs> the first, early, <laughs> the first snowfall, yeah, oh. the earliest we've ever had it. Yeah, you know, yep. this bad, right? That I can yep. remember. And the it's city keeps going. Cool. Yep. So I had my, I had my <laughs> mom uh, was saying, "Oh no, uh, are you all right?" Because I told her this is going to hit the news, right? Because we had like a forty. Well, now it's like. 58,000 homes affected yeah. with uh, power yeah. outages. Like uh, and places still without power. I yeah. didn't hear from Phil uh, in the comments if he was able to get a hold of his parents, but uh, in, in a lot of rural communities, there's no gas, right? So yeah. if there's no electricity, there's no heat. So, yeah, so my, mom called me, my mom called me this morning, uh, so I had to let her know. You know we we're coping quite well. It's not a big deal for us. <laughs> we're still uh, walking around in just sweaters. It's okay. <laughs> don't worry. It's cold enough to put sweaters on. Great. Uh, if 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 you don't like it, wait a bit. Uh, you know the weather will get better or yeah, worse. Indeed. There we go. Oh. It's just something you have to to deal with when yeah. you when you've decided that you're going to make Winnipeg your home. You will get snow yeah. and it will be nasty. <laughs> at, you're guaranteed yeah. at least once a year. Well, actually, I think the um, I think someone had uh, posted on one of the I think I, oh, I posted one of those pictures on on Facebook and someone had made a comment about the leaves. So of course, it makes sense. The trees all still have the leaves on, right? They, yeah. they mm -hmm. they've changed, they've turned color, not, but they haven't left. So, of course, all that sticky snow got on all the leaves, and it stayed yeah. there. And so you'd have like two or three inches on a leaf, yeah, on yeah. all of the tree. And it's no wonder they started coming. Yeah, coming. yeah. yeah anyhow, uh, there you go. Um, so all the information about uh, the bands, everything about uh, the Invisible Man can be found on the Invisible Man .ca. You can uh, email us. Um, Phil is. Um, airing daily this is where he would jump in and tell us exactly what times they were um so he's on uh, vwradio.co not to see not dot com but dot co and of course uh, you, you're probably already watching us on the colorado phil show page or the it's all in the mind band page or maybe not i don't know if i shared it damn it uh no um, you did oh yeah you no did. yeah i did yeah it was in the um yep. and of course you can get me and phil on twitter you can read those there so that is we go back here again yeah so well, it's been a been a great time uh ken thanks so oh, much for joining us fun. Uh, you is, know, 
It's like I was, the, I was nervous about coming on because I wasn't too sure how you know how rough you guys would be and uh, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, we're pretty fine. I think uh, hopefully we at the beginning now I told you before we went on this show is about you. This yeah. is uh, yeah. it's about promoting you. We're really about we want to promote. We're, we, I guess at the heart what what we're doing and what you do what you've done with this documentary, of course, we're doing it on a small long-term scale scale. You've, you've sort of done it on a larger scale for a couple of short-term bursts or whatever. Um, we're at the same point. We want to promote our fellow musicians, fellow artists, creative people. We want to be able to, to give them what, what they might be lacking in, or even just, you know, come in, air some gripes, tell us some of the bad stories, you know, this, we can be your therapist for an hour. Right. And it won't cost you $400. It's your worst experience is playing a gig or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Oh, well, we've had some we've had some doozies, man. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So okay, but that's again. another topic for another show. So thanks again, Ken. Okay. Uh, hang around. We'll uh, have a probably a quick chat uh, after the show. And thank you very much for everybody. Um, I think Chris and Shalim have been busy in the in the chat. I think Steve and Privet joined us. Steve was uh, one of my known him since I was seven. He's uh, in England. Joined us. Uh, I don't know if he's still on. But hi, Steve. And thanks for everybody else for joining us and we will catch you all i think it's a couple of weeks yeah uh and not next we, week but the week after yeah, right the second i think and i think uh, something like that well, we'll, we'll, we'll promote it. <laughs> i can't remember you will see a post <laughs> here we go uh okay so thank you everyone and we'll catch you next time